We talk, we talk, we talk, my treasure. Let me present it. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> Hello guys and welcome to a new video. This is the new DJI Spark. And we are so proud and happy to be presenting this little drone. We're gonna be testing it outdoors. Then we'll go with the footage in, indoors into the studio and we'll tell you what this is capable of. Now let's go inside. Before getting into the studio, we wanted to test a little bit the drone outdoors because we know a lot of you are asking, hey, let's fly the drone, we don't care about this pack. So, okay, we'll do the in-depth review in a second. Um, let's turn the drone on first. We're also filming the screen um, so that you can see what's actually being displayed on the phone. Because as you know now, this Spark right now is only being controlled through the phone. And again, we'll talk about the app later, so don't worry. See what this drone is capable of. Wow, the drone is very, very stable. It's very smooth and stable, nice. Wow, that's the tower. I didn't expect that for a selfie drone. Let's go a little bit further up. Very smooth and slowly, nice to get that nice view. And you can also pan the camera a little bit down. It is pretty amazing. So something very, very interesting happened right now. We went over the tower and we lost the signal on the phone with the drone because the distance was probably too high and a RT RTH just started automatically and it returned and it was pretty good because it didn't crash and now I connected again the phone and we cancelled the RTH so actually there is an RTH and pretty amazing. Let us try and take some pictures. We'll see that in a, in a minute inside, indoors. But I was curious to see the capability of those 12 megapixel for some landscapes. Wind is pretty strong right now. The drone is very, very smooth, I like that. Panning is smooth, camera is smooth. Let's go down a little bit. Oh, there's the detection of the sensors in front of us, three meters. We've got the wall. Wow, the wind is pretty strong. We've got a window over there, but the drone is very stable. <laughs> that's us. Chivo up there. Say hi, Chivo! Hey. <laughs> and that's me, the ugly one. And I don't know, it's pretty awesome. We're gonna try to do some awesome motion with the drone, get through that little tunnel. Let's go down slowly. And now let's go forward. Nice. And also pretty nice. Nice. Say hi to the spark and some selfie. Hi spark. One of the newest features from DJI is the gesture mode. The gesture mode allows you to use the drone without a phone, just with some phase aware recognition and tracking. Even though you won't be using the phone for controlling the drone, 
you have to turn on the drone first, wait till it connects to your phone in this case via Wi-Fi, because you have to activate the facepalm button. Once the phone is connected to the drone, you have to enter the visual navigation settings and enable the advanced gesture control on the phone. Once it's activated, you can put away your phone and all you have to do is put the drone in front of your face and click twice the battery. The drone will recognize your face, do these two beeps and start hovering. Once it's hovering in front of you, all you have to do is put your hand like this. Now the drone has recognized my hand. I can position it. Look at this, like going up and down, going left or right, and the drone will do as I tell him. For this, you'll have to get your position. Once you have done it, you can wave at the drone and the drone goes 3 meters back and at a height of 2.3 meters and now he has tracked me. This means that if I move myself, he will follow me. Once you reach your desired position, all you have to do for taking a selfie is put your hand like this. And now for returning it to your initial position, what's called back on all you have to do is put your arms in a Y position, like YMCA, and the drone will start coming back to you. And once the drone is in front of you, you have already taken the selfie. Hello guys and welcome to a new video. This is Alex Assemacher from We Talk UEV and thank you for being with us one more... Chivo. Chivo. What the hell? Oh, I understand. This is the new DJI Spark. It's too hot to handle. Hello guys and welcome to the studio. As you've seen, we've been testing the DJI Spark and we have to say we are very, very happy to what we've seen so far outdoors and the tests we have made. First, we wanted to talk a little bit about the drone itself, about the quadcopter and give you some of the specs because we think it's something very new and DJI has done a pretty good job here. And just by starting by the uh, quadcopter itself, talking that it's made out of plastic, but it's the kind of plastic you can find also on a Mavic. The colors are always the DJI colors, which is this silver gray and the black and dark gray. <clears throat> and also we can talk that the weight of this drone is of 300 grams, which is pretty, pretty nice. It does not weigh anything. And of course, it's a very, very small drone. Look at this. Look at the, my palm. My, my hand is bigger than the drone. Can you imagine? This is a very, very nice mini drone. Uh, talking about the quadcopter, we can see that it is not foldable. Um, however, the propellers work the same way as the Mavic propellers. Just by pushing a little bit and turning it out, you can push it in and the propeller is ready to fly. Also, what you can notice by seeing the drone from the front part is this 3D TOF sensors. We'll talk about this later, but the system is the same way as the Phantom 4 Pro works on the lateral sensors. Of course, the camera and its gimbal, we'll be talking about that also. And on the back part, you can see that there is a micro SD port where you can actually put in the micro SD card and the USB cable uh, for charging the whole drone, which is also pretty amazing. Talking about the bottom part of the drone, just to say it includes a VPS system and the battery, which is by the way the first battery that is on the bottom of the drone, which is an intelligent flight battery with an autonomy of about 16 minutes, but we'll talk about the battery also later. Talking about the speed of this drone, this drone is capable of fly up to 50 kilometers per hour, 31 miles per hour, or be ascending and descending at 3 meters per second or 9.8 feet per second pretty awesome. The size of this drone 
I know that comparing it to my hand may not be very ac accurate. It's 14.3 centimeters and 14.3 centimeters long and wide. Also, the thickness, the height of the drone is 55 millimeters or 5.5 centimeters. And of course, we wanted to show you the compared size to a Mavic. And as you can see here, the folded Mavic is almost twice as big as the Spark. And if we do open up the Mavic, you can see that anyways, the drone is way, way smaller than the Mavic. So it's a really beautiful and brilliant mini drone. Just to finish up this section, just to talk that the Spark has two different vent system, which uh, helps the drone to cool itself. Also, um, this drone works from zero degree Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. But now let's talk about one of the most amazing things and what most of you are probably expecting. The gimbal. The gimbal, as you can see, is very different from what we're used on DJI drones, but it has showed us some great, great quality. And talking about um, what this gimbal is capable of with the camera, first of all, talk that the pitch of this gimbal is capable of doing minus 85 degree, which is almost like down up to zero degree. This is the different range from where you can move the camera up and down, so which is pretty amazing. Also talking about the stabilization of this gimbal, just to say that it's a two axis gimbal, um, it can move the pitch and it can move roll. So the only thing it cannot do is move like this. But anyway, for a mini drone is pretty good too. The camera includes a CMOS sensor with a size of 1.23 inches and it has 12 million effective pixel, which is of course 12 megapixel for the picture. The camera can do photos just in JPEG and video it can do full HD. Also say that it has a maximum bitrate of 24 megabits per second. The lens is 81.9 degrees of field of view with a 25 millimeter lens, which is an equivalent to the 35 millimeter lens with an aperture of f2.6. The shutter speed can go from 2 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second. The ISO range can go up to 3200 on video and up to 1600 on photo. As I mentioned earlier, it includes sensors. And the front sensors, as you can see here, are 3D TOF sensors. Where do we know that from? From the Phantom 4 Pro. It included the first time this type of sensors on the lateral sensors. So it's different from the front and the rear sensors from any Phantom because it has this new kind of technology. Its obstacle sensing range is capable of work from 1 to 16 feet or in this case from 0.2 to up to 5 meters. Talking about the VPS system on this drone, just to mention its um, velocity range, it is capable of work up to at a height from 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters at a velocity of 36 kilometers per hour or 22.4 miles per hour. And now let's talk a little bit about the battery. This battery has a capacity of 1480 milliampers, 1480 milliampers. It has a voltage of 11.4 volts and its max maximum charging voltage is from 13.05 voltage. The battery type is a LiPo 3S and the energy is 16.87 watt per hour. Just to say that its weight is about 95 grams. So the drone is 205 grams and the battery is 95 extra grams. And here it comes with its charging and dock station, which is pretty awesome because what I'm the most happy with is the dock. You can charge up to three batteries at the same time. Thank you for not having to purchase this apart from the drone, DJI. Thank you very much. This is much appreciated. And just to say that the charger has an input of 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz and 0.5 ampere. And that's pretty much it. You can connect it with the cable to any charging point in your home. 
Just to finish up before going into detail on the footage, say that the Spark is capable of working at a frequency of the operating frequency of 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. We were really curious about the video output on this drone because as you know we had been testing uh, a few weeks ago some selfie drones and we were not very happy about the actual video output but we're stoked we're, we're really uh, amazed by the quality of this drone because we did not think that it would be doing such an amazing uh, video and of course it was interesting to see that it does not have 4k for example, the Unique Breeze does, but you know, it's a good full HD and it's working pretty good. It's so stable, the gimbal, the gimbal is really stable and it does not seem even to be windy. And there was, as you have seen, the possibility to edit it into some cinematic footage is also very amazing. And we're just very, very happy with this output. course we had edited that and um, we had cut it and put it some cinematic uh, style we hope you like that we imported some of the pictures that we took before on the amazing castle to Lightroom and we just wanted not to get into a lot of details but just to see the main things that this camera of the spark is capable of and as you can see we have a couple of selfies a couple of pictures from above. We also have a landscape. And as we said before, the lens is about 35 millimeters. It's equivalent to 35 millimeters. And this will allow you to make, uh, take amazing portrait photos and also landscape photos. Um, we have zoomed in a little bit in the different pictures and we have been able to see that there is not a real aberration on the picture. So this is pretty amazing. Also, um, what we can see here, especially on the grass and on this part, is that it does have a strong and hard focus that probably gives you some hard edges and some people may maybe not like this too much. For us, it's pretty good and more for this kind of drone. And also, uh, when looking, for example, at this picture from top of the castle, as you can see, we have some very dark places like here or here and also some very bright uh, places like this one um, it does have a really good dynamic range so it is working pretty good as i said the uh, opposite of this dark places the very bright places are also okay exposed they are very good and talking about the colors as we can see pretty much here and also on the landscape the colors are okay there's not really much to say they are working good um, as we had no, we haven't not taken any pictures of the sun, we have not seen any type of flares and also on the corners of the image we don't see a lot of aberration, um, not, a, not too much distortion, for, for example here if we go to this place, there is a little bit of a distortion but not, it's not creating that fish eye that would create for example a GoPro. We've seen that it does also not create any vignette on the corners of the picture. And we just, for summing up, we have to say that for a very small sensor that is these 1.2 uh, thirds of an inch from the Spark, the camera and the photo output is pretty, pretty good. And this will allow you to take very nice pictures. We wanted to take a look at the DJI GO app. It's the same app you know until now, the DJI GO 4, and in it includes for the Spark right now the settings. So uh, starting with the top bar, we don't want to get into much detail because this would take us a lot of time. The system status, in this case, the low battery warning. Just below it, we have the battery level indicator. Uh, on the right side, what it says, ETI, it's the flight mode. Um, we have some other parameters like the GPS signal strength and the 3D sensing system status or the Wi-Fi status, also the battery level of the drone. Um, on the right bar and 
including this new feature, we have this gimbal slider that by pressing we can get it up or down and also of course the photo video toggle then by clicking you change from photo to video the button for shooting a photo or recording the video and below it we have the camera settings that in this case we can change from auto to manual change the iso the shutter speed and the ev in the case of the photo we can go from single shot multi-build bracketing the time chart the shuttle focus or panel on the settings we can include some histograms which by the way is really nice because you can drag the histogram around um, auto sync hd photo display camera osd the white balance with some uh, settings presets and the grid um, going back to the main screen uh, on the left bar we have of course the auto takeoff landing button uh, we're not going to do this right now in the studio below it the smart rth the intelligent flight modes right here this joystick include the intelligent flight modes we know them apart from the quick shot which is new but we'll talk about it in a new video because also it would take too long and the virtual joystick switch which is one thing you're gonna use the most it's this button here um, these are the joysticks for controlling the drone and finally you press this button here on the top right corner which is the gimbal switch and in this case just by moving the screen of the drone you can pan the camera up and down while you're flying using the joystick which is pretty awesome that you can do it both things together well just summing up um this drone left us speechless we just want to highlight a couple of things um first of all the size of course you may think that size is not important well i'm sorry guys but size always is important and we did not expect that output not from the photo not from the video not for stability not nothing and i have to say with this size i'm gonna take it on my travels on my trips for sure it's very very small and one thing that has uh, surprised us the most is the, ca the camera with it with this gimbal I mean, have you seen what this is capable of doing? We, we thought that this would be like a selfie drone, like this one, for example. And we also have the Dobby drone and some hover cameras. But seriously, it does have no comp comparison. We don't even know if it fits into the same category. So the camera output is amazing, really. And it is very, very easy to use. We just lifted it up for the first time at that castle. It was very windy. We did not know anything and we could fly it, take amazing photos, take amazing videos. I'm speechless. I, I just can't say too much about it. It's let me know on the comments if you would buy it for that price and, and if, if you're going to use it, I'm going to use it for sure. And finally, I wanted to say that for all those people that may be scared of flying Mavics or Phantoms or bigger drones, guys, this thing is your choice for sure. Um, this is opening up a completely new world for new pilots so expect a lot of people that have never bought a drone before piloting this one and flying this drone and that's pretty much it well guys thank you very much once again for watching our video leave a like we do appreciate it leave us any comments if you want to know anything further from or anything extra from this dji spark and I told you, uh, we read the comments, we do the videos also for you. And uh, don't take it too seriously. We are funny guys. Don't, don't scream and, ah, this song is just ugly. Come on, guys. We're having a good time. Um, if you want to know anything extra from the drone, let us know. We read the comments. We'll do the videos for you. And maybe we're expecting to do a comparison video with other selfie drones, if it's a selfie drone. Thank you. Subscribe. Keep calm. And always, talk UAV. Thank <laughs> you.